Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Jennifer? Thanks, Wendy. Welcome, everyone. So today we will be talking about writing on your screen options, and you'll be able to access the recording and the PowerPoint slides for this at http backslash backslash tiny.cc backslash AIA dash writing. And just a little reminder, you can't click on the screen here to get there, and you will need to type it into your browser, uh, and it is case sensitive. So welcome. Today we're going to be talking about some very cool features for you. Our presenters today are Wendy Teets from Kent State University, myself, I'm Jennifer Canis from the University of South Florida, and Tracy Miller Nobles from Austin Community College. Uh, quick reminder that if you have any questions as you're going through the presentation, please type those in the Q&A box and we will make sure to answer those questions at the end today. So welcome. So next, I'm gonna tell you, uh, we all decided this was the best uh, slide for the day. This is, uh, you probably noticed the last couple of days, we haven't been using video, mainly because of our um, internet capabilities and everything slowing down, but uh, found this little meme for you today and thought you would enjoy that. Um, I'm not gonna say which one of these two I look like today. We'll just assume I look like the person on the right or the dog on the right. But anyway, now I'm going to turn it over to Wendy, and she's going to talk about your various options. Great. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about writing on your screen. And we have lots of options for writing on the screen. Um, and it's kind of when we were talking about this, how to structure this uh, information, I kind of realized that we need kind of a menu to pick from. And we have. Um, Recording software, we need to pick what we're going to do to do the recording. We have to pick software for the writing. And then we also need hardware, what are we going to use? And you, these are not completely exhaustive lists, but this is kind of how we're going to frame this conversation. So we're going to start talking about options for recording on a phone or tablet screen. So you can use your phone for recording or a tablet. And the three things that we're going to talk about, the three apps for on those devices, would be Explain Everything, EduCreations, and Screencast-O-Matic. So, first of all, Explain Everything. This one's been around for a long time. It's a web-based application. You can use it on a desktop. You can use it on an Apple um, device, like an iPad or an iPhone, or on Android. So they have apps for all of those. And basically what it does is it records the whiteboard writing while you're speaking. You can add images, videos, documents. You can import the background. You can import a PowerPoint. You can import a PDF, Word. There is a free plan, allows you to do up to three projects, one page each, which is really nice for trying it to see what you think of it. There is an educator plan that's $25 a year, which pretty much takes your limitations off and I believe they do have a seven-day trial in addition to all that. So um, what we're going to be doing a little bit later is I've got, we've got a variety of video clips that I'm going to be showing you that were made with different ones of these so you can kind of see. But I wanted to set the stage for what we're going to be showing. The next one is EduCreation. It is web-based for iPhone and iPad, so it's very narrow. And it allows you to record whiteboard writing while speaking. You can also add images, videos, documents. You can import your background. But the real neat thing about this thing, this software, is it's an interactive whiteboard. So if you were working on a homework problem, you could send students a join link, and they could join you on the, web, on the whiteboard itself. So that's really neat. Um, they do offer a free plan one draft at a time, 50 megabyte limit, um, and they are offering their pro plan free until May 1st. So if you're interested in this, it would be a good time to try it out if you have time to do those kind of things. But normally it is $99 a year. Um, 40 students are included with that. Again, this is kind of a specialty product in that it's an iPad, iPhone product and but you can have an interactive whiteboard with students which is kind of neat um, and then screencast-o-matic screencast-o-matic is actually going to show up a couple times here today 
it is it is web based for computers. So you can run it on Windows. You can run it on Macs. You can run it on a Chromebook. There is an Apple an Apple app for iPhone and iPad, and there's Android app. So you can do it on all those devices. It allows you to record screen and audio. And what you do if you're using the Apple app or the Android app on your phone or tablet, it actually syncs with your desktop version and then you can edit it. And this is the easiest software I've ever seen to change the length of a video clip. So we've got a sample, I'll show you what I did with it. And Screencast-O-Matic shows up in a couple places because it's for computers and uh, mobile devices. There is a free plan up to three projects, one page each. So it lets you experiment with it. You can try the premium plans for free for seven days. And this actually, I do have the Premier plan because I like doing things. Sometimes I need to show students how to do something on a mobile device. And this allows me to capture that. And again, I've got a sample of this coming up. So we'll see what that looks like too. But that's Screencast-O-Matic. And the free version works well in certain circumstances. So keep it, keep it as an option, depending on what you want to do. Then we have options for recording our computer screen. So the prior options were options for recording our tablet or our phone. This now, we've got several options for recording the computer screen. Again, we're not giving you every single option here. Screencast-O-Matic, great all-purpose tool. Um, Explain Everything also has a desktop app. Uh, PowerPoint recording feature is one of my new favorites. It's relatively new. Camtasia and its cousin Snagit can't be discounted either. Certainly we can use those. And then if you're doing a live class, Collaborate Ultra, if your school has it, is a pretty good tool. Um, we did do a webinar earlier this week on video recording options, so I'm not going to dwell on these specifically. And then we get into, well, we can record our screen, but what are we going to do on our screen? How are we going to write on our screen? So we're going to be showing some things that we can do in Word, in Excel, in OneNote, in PowerPoint, in Explain Everything, Edu Creation. So I've got, we've got samples of all of these. And then finally, we come to the last piece of the puzzle, and it's your hardware options. And so some hardware options we're going to talk about beyond the standard Windows computer or Mac computer would be a LiveScribe pen, an iPad or Android tablet, and then the Microsoft Surface products. They have a whole slew of them. And within Microsoft Service, Surface, we're going to demo OneNote and PowerPoint. So at this point, I am going to give it over to Tracy, and she's gonna, we're kind of gonna work our way from least lowest tech to highest tech, from cheapest to most expensive. And her first tip is, I think, a fabulous tip. So um, go ahead, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, you know, I'll admit that I am probably this morning the uh, puppy dog on the left side of the screen that looks like quite a mess. So I am super glad that my um, video is not showing today. So our idea, the first idea, is a super easy idea. Um, what I did in this video that you're going to see next in just a moment is you're going to see a video that I recorded on my computer using Camtasia. And, but you could use any screen software recording, um, any, any screen recording software to create a video similar to this. All I did was I took the solutions manual um, problem that I wanted to work and I pasted the solution into Word and then I changed all the text to white. And then I walked through the problem um, with audio and as I was working through the problem, I simply changed the font color from white to black so it is interactive it's going it's moving as I'm going through the video so Wendy let's go to the next screen let's see a demonstration of this video so you can see here what I'm doing is I'm just simply saying okay here's the formula that we're going to use for double declining balance then I provide the students with the worked out formula and so I'm saying we've got 40 million dollars here our accumulated depreciation is zero I need to multiply that by two times one over eight years. 
So the solution to that is $10 million in year one. So now let's go through and work year two. In year two, our, there's our formula. Now let's put in our numbers. So $40 million less 10,000. Now where did the $10,000 come from? Well, it came from the accumulated depreciation in year one. So you can see that's how I created this video. All I did was I took the solution from the solutions manual and I simply pasted it into a Word document. I changed all the font that I wanted to, all the text that I wanted to reveal as I was going along. I changed that to white. I set my Camtasia to do a screen record of the Word document. And then I just talked through the problem just like I would do in class. And then simply, I would just simply post this video to an unlisted link in YouTube and give that link to my students. Super low tech, easy way to work through problems um, without needing to actually write on anything on your tablet or your computer. So now we're going to go um, to, I believe we're gonna head over to um, Wendy and she is going to demonstrate enough, another idea. Okay, thanks. So when Tracy was talking about the changing the font color, I thought I do something similar. I use Excel for it. So same idea. Now this next little video clip I'm showing you is I use Screencast-O-Matic on a computer to do this one. So you can see they're all going to be similar. Here I've, I've got the spreadsheet in Excel already. So I'm just going cell by cell and I'm changing the font. So as I talk, I'm going to be talking to the students narrating what I'm doing, but it's all there and I can just continue on and that's all there is to it. Um, so the next idea we have is using PowerPoint animation. So again, notice that we're not drawing on our screen yet, but we can quote unquote write on it through these use of different tools and um, the font color. And now I'm going to show PowerPoint. So what I'm gonna show right now, I use Snagit to record this little video that's in here. And the, um, so we have a journal entry. And so what I did here is in PowerPoint, I have animated it so I can talk about each piece of this slide. So this way, it's the same as me circling everything and, um, and pointing it out, but I'm not actually writing on the screen. So I can get away from having to have having to write on the screen, but I can kind of model that. Another thing I can do is I can actually animate each individual. Um, this one I wanted to do cash first. This is not a mistake. So I was going to do cash first, and then put in my dollar amount, and then I'm going to put in my um, repairs expense and the uh, debit, and I can talk through that. And I'm controlling that just by hitting next. Um, on my pointer device that gets me to that. All of that is done through animation and each one of these fields, I'm gonna, I'm going to show you, okay? So each one of these fields, if I go into animation and I go into um, show my animation pane, I'm gonna make it this big, you'll see that in that one I just talked about, my repairs expense, for example, is a text box. So these are all text boxes that I have added and then I animate them just simply by doing up here for each one. The animation pane shows me everything I've done there. So that's what's going on behind the scenes in that using animation in PowerPoint, which is another easy way to get through, um, to get around that idea of how do I write on the screen. I like that. If you have too many numbers on the screen, it gets to be kind of a pain to do all those text boxes boxes, but for this size of problem, it works really well. Okay, so next up. So I was trying to think about what if we really want to write? We feel compelled to write. So I thought about what would I use if I all I had was my phone. So if all I had my was my phone, I could do explain everything on my phone. So I'm going to show you an example of a video I did on my phone. I have inserted it, and I do want to say when I show this, it's got black space around it because I was trying to fit it in to a PowerPoint, but if I were sharing it, it would be the screen. So 
here I had the problem. I uploaded this problem to explain everything. And then you'll see that I'm highlighting and it's recording me as I'm talking. I'm not sharing that audio right now, but I've highlighted that and then I'm using another tool and explain everything to um, write on here. And I did this with my iPhone using just a plain regular stylus. That's all I did here. And I was able to write on the screen. Okay, now we talked earlier about edu creations and I'm going to show you what I did on edu creations on an iPad. Now I have an iPad and I have an Apple Pencil. So I use both of those to create this next one. And again, I uploaded a Word document that had this problem on it. So in the video, I'm narrating this as I talk. So I'm saying I want $200 minus 150 gives me $50. And that is my equity I narrate as I go. So that's just an example of using Edu Creations. Okay, so I can also use Screencast-O-Matic on an iPhone. And this one's really cool because once in a while, I need to show students how to do something on their phone. And what I did here, the reason this is unique is I'm not writing on my screen, but I'm using, I'm using Screencast-O-Matic to record something on my phone. So you're not confined to just recording um, through um, like explain everything. You can use Screencast-O-Matic to make it. So here's what I did on my phone. This is my phone and this is me in um, explain everything doing that problem. And you can see I'm showing you what all, let me go back to that. Um, I'm showing you what all is, let me go here, okay. I'm showing you all the different buttons that are available and explain everything. And I could make this longer, I could expand it, but it was recording my phone. And then once I finished recording my phone, explain everything, there's one of my screens on my phone, then it automatically synced to my desktop and I could go in and edit it however I wish. So that's another trick you can use. Okay, so now I'm going to give it to Jennifer and she's gonna talk about LiveScribe. Thanks, Wendy. Okay, so LiveScribe, we talked about it a little bit before, but it is a pen. There's different types of pen. I use the Echo Pen, and it also captures uh, your writing and your speaking at the same time into the pen. So there's a microphone built in, and we have it on mute right now, but you can see we're just writing, and there is narration in the background, and it will walk you through on the notebook. Um, you'll have to use a special notebook to do this, but you can walk through solving a problem and it will record everything you do. Um, like we said in a prior recording, uh, I use the two gigabyte Echo Smart Pen. It's about $123 on Amazon. You do need a special notebook to work with the software. Uh, we showed a picture of it yesterday, but down at the bottom of the notebook, you have a record, a pause, and a stop button. So when you begin to start writing, you wanna hit uh, obviously record so that it can pick up your voice while you're writing and then once you're done writing all of that then you simply just plug your live pen your live scribe pen into your computer and it will upload uh, so then you can decide if you want to share it as a PDF or share it out in different ways um, so you do need the notebooks a four pack is about $29 on Amazon um, and then what I've done in the past is I've shared the links as pen casts where they're a PDF uh, it looks like a PDF document, but then you can click a little when you share it, then it's it goes with the audio goes with it. So you can just click on the little button and then it's almost like the notebook piece of paper on the PDF goes blank. And then as you start playing the audio, then it will start filling in everything you've written. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Tracy, I believe, to talk about OneNote. Thank you. Yes. So now we're moving to maybe our more, our most expensive ideas for writing on your computer. And in this case, we're actually writing on your computer. And this is how I create all of my lecture videos. Um, so if I wanna do a short workout problem, I'll use the um, example that I did previously. But in this example that you see on your screen, um, what I have is I have a Surface laptop that comes with a, a specific stylus pen. 
And I am simply using OneNote, which is a Microsoft Office product that comes with 365. And I am writing on my computer and recording my screen at the same time. So this video right here um, is where I have created a problem. Um, I've imported it into OneNote. I'm writing on my laptop using my Surface and then I am recording it using a screen recording software. I specifically used Camtasia. Uh, so another great example of if you really want to get that writing experience, but also our most expensive um, option as far as the writing experience goes. So now Wendy's going to demonstrate basically the same thing, but instead of using OneNote with PowerPoint. Yes. So this presentation, I'm hosting it on my Surface Book, and I just want to show you that I have my pen that goes with it, and I can write anything on here that I want, and so I use the Surface Book in class all the time. Um, it's been, it's, I have a Surface Book, as does Tracy, um, which allows me to detach my screen if I wanted to, so I could write more tablet-like. But they do have uh, Microsoft Surface laptops, which don't have the detachable screen, but you can still write on them. And then they have the Surface Pro, which is a little bit lower cost. And those are really good options, but we realize it's not for everyone. But um, I really, really like my Microsoft Surface device. I've had um, two Microsoft Surface devices. I had one of the original ones, and it was nice. But this newest one really has a lot of um, options and this pen, I can, if I press really hard, I can do harder, lighter touch, lighter touch, and you just flip it over and you can erase everything you're doing. So when I do recordings, I'm typically using PowerPoint because I can just write on it. So you can use OneNote, you can use PowerPoint. There's a multitude of things you can do. You can write on PDF, you can do a lot of things, but the Surface Book is what we've been using for all these webinars and I can write on it. Okay, so the thing too about this webinar that we've um, been doing is you'll notice we had a lot of video clips in our PowerPoint. I did mute the audio so we were narrating it, but those clips did have audio in them. But how I got them into this PowerPoint was through the recording feature in, Power, in um, PowerPoint. This recording feature allows you just to insert a video right into your PowerPoint. And if you notice, they auto played. I just advanced and the video would start playing and then it would go to the next screen. So that's an option. And if you are interested in that, we had a webinar earlier this week on recording videos. That was, um, that was, um, we talked about how to do that because this recording, this recording um, item on the ribbon is not in PowerPoint by default. This is also relatively new. This is different than PowerPoint Record, which is a different feature. It's an older feature. This recording is new. I believe next week we may be doing a webinar on using this recording feature in PowerPoint, this new feature, because it is really slick and there's a lot you can do with it. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy now. Thank you, thanks Wendy. So we just want to remind you that you guys have a lot of options um, from inexpensive free options that you already have to more expensive options by um, utilizing a computer that you can actually work on. But remember the three things that you need to decide is the first thing, what type of software do you want to use to record? And what do you want to record? Do you want to record your phone or your tablet or do you want to record your computer? Then what type of software do you need in order to quote write on your screen? Do you want to write with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote? And then the third is what type of hardware are you going to use? Are you simply going to just use your finger or a stylus or are you going to purchase a pen or a iPad or tablet or Surface or, or a um, computer like a Surface, Microsoft Surface. So thinking through those three options that will help you create the visual effect that you want in working and writing on your computer screen. 
So our closing meme for today to give you all hope is that June is coming. We will eventually get through this semester and we will all be so much prouder for what we have accomplished in these challenging times. Um, so do what you can. Know that we're gonna get a break here before we start all over again. And we have provided you with some great resources in how to get started. So please follow our blog as Wendy shared. Um, we are going to have um, some hands-on demonstrations next week. Um, those are to be determined, so please follow our blog to get announcements about what those are. In addition, on our blog website, we have a link now that says recordings. You can go there to get a access to this recording and also to all of the recordings we've done this week related to getting up to speed in teaching online. You can access our recording for today, and our, I'm sorry, our slides for today at that website listed on your screen, tiny.cc, AIA-writing. And you can get um, the slides for the presentation today. Now, you know, Wendy and Jennifer, we have gotten some really great questions. Um, so let's start. I'm gonna pass this one to you, Wendy. The first is, if faculty are looking for, are looking to buy a surface, do you have any advice about buying a surface and which type is better for teaching in general? Well, it, it depends what you're going for. Um, if at the very minimum, the Surface Pro is the bottom model and not by any means is it a terrible decision. Um, the Surface Pro for me, the um, keyboard is a little flimsy and that's what stops it from being my go-to machine and uh, but it is an excellent choice it's very small very lightweight it's kind of like an ipad size and that's easy to tuck away so the surface pro is certainly good it depends how sensitive you are to the size of the keyboard and the flimsiness of the keyboard and um, any of the surface models that you purchase you do need to buy a pen the surface pen to go with it I would not, they make off-brand pens and you could say, oh, I'm gonna save some money with an off-brand pen and they work, but keep in mind that the Surface Pen does some pretty cool things, including you can click the quote unquote eraser on it to advance your slides. So I don't even need to use a clicker in class to advance slides, I just hold on to my Surface Pen and click the eraser to go forward. And there's some other features on the Surface Pen that aren't found on knockoffs. So the Surface Pro is a good beginner um, level. The Surface Laptop, I can't say anything bad about it. It's really nice. It's a nice machine. You could certainly use that. Um, when I got the Surface Book, I was looking for something that I could travel with and it had a lot of ports that I could use. So my Surface Book is heavier and thicker than the Surface Laptop. I have a few more ports, but you can get around that by using hubs. So it basically comes down to what your budget is. I don't think there's one answer for everyone. So that's my answer. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, Wendy. You know, I think both you and I started off with the Surface Pro and then I, and both of us um, had great results using the Surface Pro. And then we both looked to upgrade to a little more advanced computer. And that's why we chose um, the Surface Book that we're in right now. So, but you can't go wrong, really. Now, you know, Wendy, you mentioned the um, need for a stylus, a pen. And I agree, I use the Microsoft Surface Pen to go with the Surface computer. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> for the writing on the screen options, do you need a device with touchscreen capability? You know, so thinking back about the options that we talked about today, which of those do you absolutely need a device with touchscreen capability? Well, you need, so you're going to be recording your screen. And if you're using your computer and you actually want to write on it physically, you need a touchscreen. But on the other hand, if you do some of the things we talked about in the beginning, like Tracy's tip about copying your solution manual in, changing the font to white, and then revealing it as you go, you don't need a touch screen for that. 
So I think we showed some options that you don't need a touch screen for, but if you're going to use a computer and you want to write on your screen, you're going to have to get a touch screen. I take that back. You can use your mouse to write on the screen. It's a learned skill. I could write on my screen right now with my, um, with my track, I don't want to mess things up right now, so I'm not going to do it. I can write with a mouse on my trackpad. You can write um, with a mouse. You can write with a mouse. You can write with a trackpad. You just have to practice, and it's probably not going to be as elegant as using a pen. Yes, and it's you could get a similar result by using in a much more um, cleaner appearance by using some of the other options we talked about. I think. So one of our yeah. questions um, is I had mentioned that when I post my videos, I upload them to YouTube and I post them as unlisted. So this attendee said that they've never posted anything to YouTube before and they wanted to know how do you do that and what's the difference, you know, what is an unlisted um, link? So when you go to YouTube, um, what you want to do first is you want to create a YouTube account. And you simply want to do that because then all your postings go into the same place. And there's a couple of different ways that videos are posted on YouTube. It could be public, and that means that it goes to everybody in the world and it can be searchable. You can um, post a video as unlisted which is what I do, which means that it's not searchable, but if a student or if anyone has the um, URL address, they can access that video. Or you can post it as private, which means that you would actually have to designate who um, would be able to watch that video. So I post all of my videos as unlisted because I want my students to be able to watch them, so I share the URL link with them, but I don't want other people to be able to search for the videos. And the reason why I do that is because it has some proprietary information, like um, working out of into chapter problems, or maybe solutions to different problems, and I just don't want those to be searchable on, um, on YouTube so that anyone can see those. Tracy, Tracy? I want to add something too that we didn't mention earlier that I think is really important to keep in mind. Um, I think there's some forgiveness because we're in this mad scramble to convert to online, but I think I'd be amiss if I didn't talk about the need to when you have some time to go back. Um, when you post videos, you need to be able to close caption them. Um, and again, we're trying to do we're trying to do a huge amount of things right now to get our classes to help our students. But know that if you were doing this going forward, like summer or fall, when you've had a chance to breathe and think about how you might do it, we need to close caption videos for students. It's part of the ADA. You do not you do not have to have a student who requires the accommodation. The videos have to be closed captioned. That said, I don't think anyone is going to fault you right now if you do this, unless you do have a student who requires captioning. But going forward, you have to caption. And one of the advantages of YouTube is when you upload to YouTube, YouTube will generate some automatic captions. They are not perfect, but they are better than nothing. And then there is a way to go into YouTube and edit your captions. So I think that's a really good plug for using YouTube. Um, I use a combination of unlisted videos and public videos. It just depends what it is. So that's just what I wanted to interject there, Tracy. Yeah, great. So we have several attendees that are saying that they have different types of laptops besides the Microsoft Surface, and they're asking if they can do something similar to what we do, and the answer is absolutely. Um, so if you have a Dell with a touch screen, then you should be able to get some type of stylus pen that you can use to write on your screen. And I see another attendee is saying that their um, school is looking at purchasing an XP pen tablet for math and accounting and exactly the same. So you, all you need is, if you're gonna wanna write, actually write on your screen, is you need some type of device that allows you to write. You need a writing device and then you need um, a screen capture software such as 
um, Camtasia or Screencast-O-Matic or the recording feature in PowerPoint. Uh, any of those will work in order for you to be able to write on your screen. So now, um, Wendy, we have another question and um, you, you know they pointed out that they really like that recording feature, the new recording feature in PowerPoint. Can you remind everyone how you get that recording feature? Well, what you have to do is you have to add it to your ribbon. And the best advice I have for you is to use Google to type Microsoft um, PowerPoint recording add to ribbon. And it has to be kind of specific because it'll want to go back to the original PowerPoint recorder feature, which is still there, but you're looking for PowerPoint recording. And when I send, I'm going to be sending out the video for this. I'm probably going to send it out tomorrow. I'll send out the slides and the video, and I'm going to try really hard to remember to put the link in there for how you add that to your ribbon. But I noticed when I was Googling it to give someone the link that that old recorder feature keeps coming up and that's something completely different. So we're just about out of questions. I think we've got two more questions that we haven't answered. Um, the first one, I am not familiar with either of these softwares, but maybe Jennifer or Wendy, either of you are. Are either of you familiar with Panopto or Cloud App and are these good softwares to use? Um, I have heard of both, but I do not know enough to speak to them. Yeah, I agree. I, I've heard of both. I've used Panopto in the past, but only just to play with it. So I couldn't really speak to that either. Sorry. Yeah, and that goes to point out that, you know, there's so many options out there. And just because we didn't mention an option does not mean that it's not a great solution. Um, you know, Wendy, Jennifer, and I wanted to only talk about the options that we use and that we're familiar with. Um, so just because we didn't mention Panopto or Cloud Apps certainly doesn't mean that that can't do exactly what we demonstrated. Um, but you know, it it definitely um, could do exactly what we demonstrated. Um, so we um, so we again we have another question on here. Um, this one says, what about using a drawing pad with a laptop that is not a touch screen? So anyone d done anything like that using a drawing pad with a laptop? I, I have. I've used the Wacom tablets in the past, and Wacom tablets are either wireless or they connect via USB um, connection, and you absolutely can do that as well. That's another option. Um, again, it's it's a specialty option and it kind of for those of you that don't know the writing tablet is like adding a touch screen to your computer you can write on it and you see the writing up here on your computer so that is absolutely yes an option so one last question bonus question we've got a great question on here that says how do you know if you're getting the actual surface pen or one that works with that is compatible with a surface and you know I had to go you know I looked on Amazon when I was looking I lost my pen and so I was looking on Amazon to purchase a replacement and I noticed the same thing that it was like they said they were surface pens but they weren't really they were just compatible so I actually had to go directly to the Microsoft website and purchase the pen um, directly from the Microsoft website Wendy have you had similar experiences I have only purchased mine directly. Um, I purchased one from Amazon and one from um, Microsoft just because I like to have a spare. And the cost should give you a good clue because they should cost in the neighborhood of anywhere from seventy to a hundred dollars. If you see one that's for like thirty five, it's not what you need. There's also different generations of them. So again, the best advice I have for you is if you have a Surface tablet, if you're buying a Surface uh, machine, go onto the Microsoft website. You can put in your exact model so you get the right pen. But I know there's two different, I'm pretty sure there's two different pens. And this um, pen that goes with the Surface book, it's really cool because it is magnetic. It sits on the side of my screen when I don't need it. And um, yeah, so just kind of 
kind of watch which one you're getting. It should be cost more than $70, I would guess. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. What a robust discussion we've had about options for um, writing on your screen. Hopefully we have given you some things to try out for um, over the weekend and getting started next week. Again, please follow us on our blog, accountingisanalytics.com, as we do some hands-on sessions in the next coming weeks. And don't forget that you can get today's slides at that tiny URL on your screen, tiny.cc, AIA-writing. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope you guys have a nice weekend. Remember to take some moments for yourself. Don't spend all weekend working. Um, get outside and uh, smell the flowers and in a safe distance from your neighbors. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.